I'm glad that was fast. <laughs> was out of my finger.
Kids these days. I was visiting with Leon. Oh, okay. Leon, it's all your fault, apparently. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Welcome to worship this morning. Back, join us for our time together. Those who of you who are watching via Facebook Live, welcome. A few things to share with you uh, this morning before we continue. This morning, following worship is coffee hour downstairs, and there's lots of good stuff I saw go downstairs. So hopefully, you plan to join us um, downstairs for that. And at two o'clock is Wyatt Biddles. Wyatt sitting back there. His Eagle Scout Court of Honor downstairs, and so. Um, <laughs> So we'll look forward to that. Have you got my script ready, Cindy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you you may or may not know that when Cindy's worship leader, her worship leader bulletin may or may not be correct. And it may or may not have extra pages in it or handwritten notes. And so last week, Cindy said to me, she's going to get my script ready for this afternoon. She was, that was, it was a threat is what it was, wasn't it, Cindy? It was a, a veiled threat. Oh, well, so I guess I'm on my own, right? So anyways, that's today. Um, we also will share the sacrament of communion. Everyone who is here is invited to share in the sacraments. Um, next Sunday's Mother's Day, I'm still looking for pictures. So if you haven't sent me any Mother's Day pictures, um, you can... Bring them to me, and I can scan them. You can email them to me. You can text them to me. Um, whatever works for that. Um, Therese took the sauce. Were you able to take the sauce? You happened to take it? Not yet. I, somebody said they had some more yet. So we'll yeah, and I have some in my office, as a matter of fact. Well, we've got over six hundred. So over six hundred pairs of socks that we have filled the barrel with, and Therese has delivered them to shoes for the shoeless. So thank you for thank you for that. Um, next Sunday morning is our noisy bucket offering. So um, bring your loose change next Sunday. We have a funeral dinner here again this week on Tuesday, our third in a row. And Gina has everything she needs almost. She still needs three hot dishes and two salads. So if anybody could help Gina with that. Um, you can see her after church, and she'll take you up on that offer. Okay. Our video continues this morning with the work of Easter. We were not created to live stagnant lives, to be stuck, down or broken. We were created with a purpose, a calling, a mandate, a mission. Even in these uncertain times, that calling remains the same. To go into the world, to make disciples, to share the love of Jesus. This is the work of Easter. The greatness of God, the power of the resurrection in action. What Jesus did has changed us, made us a new creation, given us an unimaginable hope. Grace has taken root, mercy has flooded our souls, and the promise of eternity has redefined our everything. So why keep all that to ourselves? It's time to put Easter in motion, to make a difference, to share Jesus with the world around us. If your life has been changed, it's time to get to work. We continue our worship as Jen plays the prelude.
You are our fortress and our rock. When the snares of this world threaten to overwhelm us, in gratitude for your mercy and your many blessings, we offer you our gifts and our ministries, that a woman world might know your grace. Amen. You be seated. Thank you, Lord. Our first scripture reading today comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure and spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, through though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am lying a Zion, lying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. This honor, then, is for you who believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the world, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The second reading comes from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be, may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not, do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if, if you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do not know him. You do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, Show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with, with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does it his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for something, I will do it. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> This 
morning's anthem is called Now We Remain. This way, Katie. I'll take you. Go that. I'll take you. Go that way. We're gonna take a field trip, man. Don't just talk to most yourselves, okay? I'm gonna call you.
parking lot that's where that cornerstone came from right Sloan yeah right right and, and that cornerstone kind of holds up the entire church right and it reminds us of who we are a little bit ago John read some words about the cornerstone in the scripture didn't you John we said the word cornerstone in the call to worship more than once right because the cornerstone for us now, we don't have a cornerstone, right? But the cornerstone for us is Jesus. And we hold him deep in our hearts. And it kind of sustains us. Much like when we share in a few minutes the bread and the cup. It's a reminder of God's presence with us. If you don't know where the cornerstone's at, after church you should go right out there. It's not raining at the moment, right? So we're, we were good, right? It's not raining at the moment. But it's a reminder that in all of our lives... Jesus holds us up. All right, I invite you to pray with me. Thank you, God, for all you give to us and for being our cornerstone. We give you thanks, God, for the cornerstone of this church that helps to hold us up. Jesus the Christ. Amen. Okay, so after communion, okay, you're going to go upstairs with Lori after communion, okay? Yeah, you can go up to Lori after communion, okay? So I'll remind you, okay? So you can go back where you were sitting and I'll remind you, okay? Thank you. You can go back with your dad. You can go back with your grandma, okay? <laughs> this table, friends. Everybody's welcome. Everyone is seen. At this table, everyone matters. And no one falls in between. At this table, you can say whatever you want. At this table, everything's forgiven. At this table, there's enough for everyone. So we come to this table, friends, as we are, remembering that the door is always open for us. And the gift that we bring is our hearts. At this table, there is no judgment. At this table, mercy 
has a seat. At this table, we are all daughters and sons of the cornerstone. That's Jesus the Christ. I invite you to pray with me. O God, consecrate therefore by your Holy Spirit this gift of bread and wine, that all of us who drink of it might know of your mercy and grace and forgiveness and welcome at this table. Amen. Will the ushers come forward, please? So our communion song this morning is For the Bread Which You Have Broken, and it's a very familiar tune, Gather Us In. next, but Jesus interrupted the conversation when he took her. And you could imagine that all the eyes that were gazing everywhere else suddenly focused on this. In the words of Jesus when he said to them, friends, this is my body, which is broken for you. Either this, all of you, remember me and be thankful. And of course, they took the bread when it was passed. And they ate it together. It was in that moment, though they didn't know it, that their lives were forever changed. Friends, for us, we gather around the table. Our conversations are rich, and they're full of laughter. We have to figure out which is the left side and which is the right side. We think about the cornerstone, the rich history of all of our 
And then we take the bread and we break it. And it is for us, the body of Christ. Friends, the body of Christ, which is broken for all of us this day. Even this, all of you, remember Christ and to be thankful. Jim, we're going to go back to the top of the song, back to the beginning. Yes. Yes. So scripture tells us that it was after supper. The conversations had started again. The meal had been shared. And after supper, Jesus raises the cup. And the conversation stops and all eyes turn toward the cup. And Jesus reminds them, this is the cup of the new covenant. It's poured out for your sins and the sins of many as often as you drink of this, remember me and be thankful. Friends, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for us this day. For the forgiveness of our sins. Drink of this all of you. Remember Christ and be thankful. We pray for me our prayer of thanksgiving. O oh Lord. May we who eat this bread become a people of living stones. May we who drink this wine become a people of salvation. Enrich our faith and trust as we gather together again at your table for this sacred remembrance. We confess our broken and sinful behavior and seek forgiveness for the harm we have done to others and to ourselves. In these moments of communion together, may we experience the confidence of children who know they are loved and accepted completely. Amen. Thank you. Octavia and Katie, you can go with Lori.
Several prayer concerns to share with you this morning before we pray together. Uh, we continue to pray for Marie and for Loy, for George and for Barb, for Patty and for Mike, and a couple of others, um, Elaine and Dimitri. Um, Dimitri's kids, mom passed away um, this week. And of course it puts everybody in just a tough spot. And so um, Elaine and Dimitri and the kids and the grandkids would appreciate all of your prayers. And we have been praying for Roy for a while now and Roy died um, on Thursday night. And he is, he's a long time friend of mine. You, you've heard me tell the story of me baptizing um, Roy out of Fairhaven. I think you've heard that story from me. If you haven't, um, you, you should hear that story from me. And I actually know them because of our long time being at the spot. And if I wasn't pouring coffee, Roy was pouring coffee. And it just so happens that Roy is the uncle to Peggy and Jesse. And we didn't know that about him. We didn't know when they started coming to church here, we didn't know that we had this common thing in life. Until one Sunday, Jesse said to me, Jim, we know we're in the right church. And I'm like, well, that's an interesting thing to say to me. And then she told me that Roy was their uncle. It's amazing how God works in our lives. And so we will be uh, celebrating his life on Tuesday. And so we would appreciate your prayers in that celebration as well. Gracious God, God of our Lord Jesus the Christ, our cornerstone, the thing that holds us up, a reminder that deep inside of ourselves, in spite of the struggles of life, in spite of death that invades our spaces, in spite of conflict and in spite of our shortcomings, deep inside of us is the cornerstone, the resurrected Christ. And God, we know you've given us this gift through Jesus of the bread and the cup. Thank you for welcoming us to this table. Thank you, God, for, for accepting us just as we are. Thank you for being our God in the midst of all of life's struggles. But God, thank you for the bread and the cup. It nourishes us not to fill our bellies, but it nourishes us as we draw closer to you. And we are forgiven. And we go from this place made whole. Oh God, we lift these many names to you, asking for your presence in their lives, for healing, for peace, for recovery and strength, for answers along the way, for grace, simple grace. 
especially, God, for those who grieve today. Elaine and Dimitri and their extended family, Roy and Larry and Peggy and Jesse and their extended family, be with them in their grief as they seek to find their way in life in a new way. God, be with our, our crazy world as we try to figure out how to stop killing each other in needless ways. Surround us, God, with your grace. Help us to look to you. And when times are tough, be our cornerstone. The thing that holds us up, straightens our stance, and reminds us of whose we are. As we give you thanks, God, for all things. Hear us, God, as we pray together our prayer of your name this morning. Living God, in times of spiritual homelessness, we long to hear Jesus' assurance that he has prepared a place for us. We yearn to be formed by the master builder into our spiritual houses, living like stones. Grant us the courage of Stephen and the confidence of Peter as we strive to be a holy priesthood. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. O oh God, you are good and just, and you hear us and forgive us. And you give us your grace as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the quiet, Lord, I come, being invited by your Son. In the stillness I can hear Jesus calling me
So I'm aware of what time it is and that we have cookies downstairs. And frankly, if I were to preach this entire story of the stoning of Stephen, we would be here a really long time. Because it really takes all 53 verses of Acts chapter 7 to tell this story. But I won't do that to you this morning. We'll just jump ahead a little bit uh, to verse 55 of chapter 7. And we hear the stoning of Stephen. When they had heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. Does anybody know this story? Now, if you were at Crimson Bells on Wednesday, you might know the story. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears, yelling at the top of their voices. They all rushed him, dragging him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Hold on to that. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold the sin against him. When he had said this, he fell asleep. So Stephen, I'm going to just the story for you a bit. Stephen was a deacon. He was meant to be a caretaker of the churches. But every once in a while, deacons would become preachers. And so if you look at Acts chapter 7, beginning of it, Stephen is a preacher. He's telling them about the resurrection. He's preaching to them about the resurrected Christ and everything that had happened and the impact on their life. Stephen is simply recounting the story, but do you know who he's recounting the story to? People like us. Not the Roman soldiers who killed Jesus, but people just like us, who had come to hear the preacher Stephen that day. And the preacher Stephen tells the story of the resurrected Christ. And he says to them, well, what might have got him in trouble initially, he says to them, you stiff-necked people, you stiff-necked people, you uncircumcised with hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. Now, in most ways, that's a compliment to be just like your father. But in this way, Stephen cut to the very heart of them. And they were taken aback. And every word he spoke, as he spoke more and more, the crowd got angrier and angrier. They heard it. And it was us, people like us, who got furious and bent down and picked up the rocks. Now, not this rock, because... Unless you're, unless you're David killing Goliath, this much doesn't do much for you. But rocks. And they drag him out of the city. And why do they do that? Because Stephen, when he preaches about the resurrection, claims to them that Jesus and God are the same. And as they get angrier, Stephen looks up to heaven and says, Hey, guess what I see? This is me paraphrasing. Guess what I see? I see God. And I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And the crowd becomes so angry that they drag him out of the city. And they all picked up their stones and those who were there laid their clothes 
at the feet of a young man named Saul. You all know who Saul is, right? Saul becomes Paul eventually. I was reading about this and thinking about this and I read a couple of commentaries and scholars believe in the story because of the way it's written witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Scholars believe that it was Saul who threw the first stone at Stephen. And scholars also believe it was because of this that Saul had the encounter with God and his life was forever changed. And so Stephen, the first martyr ever in the history of the world, cries out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them and when he had said this, he fell asleep. What does that sound like? It sounds like to me that, that Stephen knew the resurrected Christ. It's what Jesus who said on the cross, right? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Remember those words? And it's Jesus then who said, receive my spirit. Stephen echoes those words to those who would listen. So what does this story mean for us? Well, we've been talking about the ongoing work of the resurrection, the ongoing work of Easter, as we head full on to Pentecost Sunday at the end of the month. And it's this reminder for us that Easter didn't end five weeks ago. That the work of the resurrection continues. And it has to be told and preached and told and preached and told and preached and lived out in us. And how do we live that out? Well, for me, it's what John read in the scripture earlier today from 1 Peter. It's that recognition for us in our lives that Jesus is the cornerstone of our lives. The kids and I and Adam went right out there to see that cornerstone. Right, I think there's I think there's a time capsule in that cornerstone, isn't there? We we talked about at the anniversary of opening that, but the cost to do that was going to be rather significant and probably mess up a lot of stuff. But in that is some history that, that we don't know about. The cornerstone. And when you look out there at where the cornerstone's at and you look up the church, up the building, it's a reminder to me that it's what holds the church up and together. For us, the cornerstone Jesus the Christ, the resurrected Christ that Stephen boldly preached about. The cornerstone that's in us allows us in the hardest times in our lives, and we've had them, have we not? It was just Wednesday night that we stood around Roy's bed, and we all held hands. And we pray together. And a while ago, at Roy's baptism, I gave him one of our prayer crosses. And he still had it, and, and we put it in his hand. And it was important to him. And Jesse, he never let it go, did he, Peggy? Something deep inside of him, that, that cornerstone. That reminder of who God was for him. In the hardest, the most difficult times in our lives, the resurrected Christ is the cornerstone that helps us stay up straight. 
It's the cornerstone, you know, that, that we then have the ability to stand on something. To stand firmly. When the world, when the world bites at us. When thunder wakes us up. It was 7 o'clock. Something like that when I heard it. I, was, I needed to be up, but wow. Thunder happens like that to us, doesn't it? The cornerstone, the risen Christ, stands with us. That's who we are as an Easter people, friends. That's the ongoing work of Easter that lives in us and through us and around us and behind us and in front of us and beside us. It is that cornerstone when we sing that prayer song. Come to me, all you weary and worn. Come to me, all you heavy hearted. My beloved child, come and rest for a while. And you shall find rest for your soul. I don't know, but it seems to me that those words and the bold preaching of Stephen and the reminder from the bread and the cup today as we share it together that we have that deep inside of us. Might it be a part of who we are? when the thunder claps again. Because it will, right? It just will. Might we have the courage of Stephen to recognize the risen Christ in our midst. How about you pray with me? Oh God, help us in all of our lives to be your people. Just to, to live out the resurrection. And to have deep inside of us the cornerstone that is you. That keeps us upright, walking in your name, sharing all we have with each other. We give you thanks, God, for your words spoken to us today. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing our closing hymn this morning from all that dwell below the skies.
seated as Jim plays the post. She didn't like to go to the board. She's 
like, well, you get this through the mail. She said, uh-huh. rip it up, because I'm not shopping. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I may show up, but I don't need it. I'm like, happy with the work. I had, I got her, she called me and she said, yeah, I'll work. I'll work. I'll work. I'll work. I think you can I'd sit there and listen to her and be just like, how can you stand and listen to that? Uh-huh. Because she, you know, she, she, she was a dreamer. Oh, See, that was a lot of her. She called when she was happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She was happy. <laughs> she was happy. I 